everybody. This is Dr. Charles C. Lucas. I am the very proud senior pastor of Promise and Ministries. Welcome to the house. And hey, look, you know, like I said before, it's not a television show. We do this just for y'all who are viewing at home at Bedside, Bedside Baptist Amen. International <laughs> Church. Amen. Amen. And, so, and so a lot of times you know, we pastor sometimes. We get, and I want to encourage pastors, don't be just discouraged just because you have a smaller audience or congregation. you got to understand COVID and you've got people who just don't want to come back to the house of God. But amen, just be encouraged because they're, they're still showing up online. Use what God gave you. And then like, and also minister for God. You're doing it for God. And I, and I mean, I feel the power of God already. Hey, remember now, share and subscribe. Yeah. Remember to share and subscribe. Guess what? Don't get too comfortable not to share and subscribe. Amen. Just click on that button. Sometimes it takes pastors to just kind of nudge you and say, hey, look, share and subscribe. I know you don't want that on your little a uh, uh, Facebook page so people think you say for real, but you know <laughs> the secret is out, right? Jesus says if you deny him, that he'll deny you before God and the angels. So don't be ashamed of being, you proud to be black, but ashamed to be Christian. You know, you know how we woke folks are, you know? And so we don't want that. Don't be ashamed of Christ because guess what? When he comes back in all of his glory with his judgment and his rewards with him, you're going to be trying to claim him and wrap him up then. Let's do it now. Let's separate. Let's, let's, let's have, have some pride in that. Right? You know, it, the worst thing in the world is if you've got somebody that you uh, really care about and then they they your friend in private, but in public they act like they don't know you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You ever had that happen to you where, where people... People, you're quite, they shame to know that, hey, look, you know what, maybe maybe I dated somebody and then in public they act like they don't know you, you know, in front of their friends. You go up to them and, you know, you're so proud that you know them. They're like, I don't know you. Or they, they trying to be cold or distant, right? So guess what? Let's not do Christ the, the, the hope of glory. Don't do God like that. Amen. Put him on your page. Let everybody know. Come out. Yeah, they're going to expect something from Yes, yeah, so there's a standard. But guess what? <laughs> Don't be ashamed of God. Amen. Also give. Give. Give whatever you can because guess what? Now, these things are moving. And guess what? Our viewership has increased three times what it was on a regular basis just after the revivals. Amen. And so it's helping people who can't get here, people who might not have the drive to get here. It helps keep the cameras on. It helps keep the facility paid for, keep the heat on. Amen. And so guess what now? Don't just, you know, uh, 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 go out. Don't let just Macy's have your stuff. Don't just have the car dealership have your money. Don't let's have uh, 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 Papa Do's. <laughs> Papa Do's. Papa Do's got your tie. You know, the jury man got your tie. Michael Kors got your tie. No, bring it to the house of God. Guess what? God watches that and he's faithful. And guess what? We got the GiveLify application on what, baby? On, on, on Tweety Bird. We got it on Android and we have it on Apple. Right. And so you download the app and then go to Promise Hand Ministries Incorporated. You see it in Peachtree Corners, Georgia here with that GiveLify app. And then you could go and give. Amen. Yeah. Right. Because God sees it. Now, did you know pastor was on unemployment one time? And he was still giving, giving out of the unemployment. And he had bills. He had goals. He had all kinds of stuff. But he put God ahead of that. And then what God did is he took the goals. It wasn't just me. Secular humanism says it's my strength, my effort. I am God. I believe in God, but guess what? I believe in my willpower. My intellect is what's going to do it. That's what, that's a, that's a religion. Did you know that? It's called secular humanism, right? Secular humanism says it's the power of me. I believe in myself over everything else and I'm not going to leave anything to chance, right? Guess what? When you're giving, it takes faith. Amen. It takes faith to give. It takes faith to believe God. Because guess what? You're not going to see. You might not see. You know, all you see is money leaving your account and you don't see the rest. And God likes it that way. But the scripture says we walk by what? Faith and not by what? Sight. It's a faith walk. If you're going to get. Because guess what? What God has for you is bigger than what you can do. Yeah. Yeah. It's impossible for you to get there. We were believing God for a track of land, and we were so excited about it. There's a few acres, there's a corner lot right off the highway, and we're going to build our, our facility there. And guess what? Things shut down with that. Why? Because the vision was too small. Yeah. Yeah. It was too small. It was something we could have done, kind of. In a way, I'm not saying, you know, it took faith, but God wanted us to stretch our faith. Yeah. And so we had to stretch our giving. 
We end up giving tens of thousands into that to begin the seed money for that facility. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So guess what? You're never going to be in a point where God is going to tell you to give something where there's going to be lost, and He's not going to have He's not going to have you give something you can just easily do. So guess what? You might not be able to start with the tithe. Start with the five dollars. Start with it. And then don't let the devils talk you out of it. And so to make it easy, God gave you a pastor and first lady who got their own job. Don't take any money from the ministry. We give, trust me. <laughs> Our tax guy saw us like, man, you know, that contribution was hundreds of thousands. You know, hundreds of thousands. And, and, and like I said, it ain't like we got, the, like the salary ain't like that. It's just, it was almost 30 something percent of what our salary is. So we give, we believe, we sow into the ministry, not knowing when it's going to come back, but it does. Amen. Trust God. You can never beat God giving. Put it in God's hands. Could it be that you're struggling? Could it be that your dream is struggling because you got, you got the seed in your hands, but you need to put it in the master's hands? Amen. Amen. Put it in the mat. Because guess what? Me and First Lady don't want to leave you behind. We don't want to get you. This stuff is taking off. Our life is taking off. We don't want to leave you behind. So we're trying to show you the principles that, that it took to get us where we are and getting better. You know, we don't need your we don't need your money. You know, I prosperity well the tithe, this Old Testament, and, all. and I could because you know, I have a three PhDs in that stuff, so I could go and rebut that. You know, with hermeneutics and the exe exegetical analysis of the word and all that other stuff. You know, running those YouTube videos, but I just it's not. Guess what? Guess what? I can't out teach your heart. If your heart isn't in it. I can educate you all day long and rebuke that the tithe is old or New Testament. But guess what? When you want to do it, if your heart is wrong, you're going to find a way not to do it. And if I tell you about living, not shacking up with somebody or living with them without being married to them or sex before marriage, I can say it all along. But if your heart is in it, you're going to, like Judas, Jesus said, okay, just go and do what's in your heart. Jesus couldn't talk Judas out of betraying him. Amen. I can't talk you into giving. God has to do it. All I have to do is mourn when you're left. Because there's a certain level you can't get financially without giving. I don't care how smart you are. Amen? Amen? Men who want wives, men who want family, you got to lead. You got, God doesn't just want you to be the king, which is the job provider, but also the priest, which is I need you to lead in prayer, giving, and seeking me. Amen. And your giving is a part of your worship to him. You can't lead a family without teaching them God, not your position, but God has his own standards. Yeah. And what we try to do is lower it to his, our standards. But the Bible says, and, I, and I'll leave it there because I get it where Isaiah 55 says this. He says that my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. My ways are higher than your ways. Right. So guess what? With the Bible, what we're doing is we're getting God's ways because our ways are our ways are lower than his ways. His ways of honor are higher than ours. And so God's trying to teach you how to operate in his way of doing things, his way of honoring. And guess what now? And so when you do that, you'll get his life. Right. His desire for your life is higher than yours, but you got to do it his way. That's right. Yeah. Or you'll be stuck. God will be like, okay, well, I love you, but you can only handle this. Right? Then you're giving on this level. You can only trust me for this, your daily bread. You can only trust me for this. And you'll be locked out of what you want because you don't have the trust or the maturity to handle spiritual maturity. You can be mature and natural, but spiritual things, God wants you to be mature in him. See, he wants you to grow into him, not be convicted. So this place is not a place where we make you feel guilty or bad. It's a place where you teach to grow. And then you have an example of certain things, not somebody who thinks they're better than you. But the Lord got to give, Lord God to give of our time and our resources, Lord God, for guess what? The great revivals that are coming, the people who are going to be saved, Lord God. Lord, we get to be a part of that, Lord God. We thank you for that, Lord God. We speak to us today, your people, as you prepare us for greatness to come. In Jesus' name, Father, amen. And guess what? We're on a series called Patience. And, and I told you before about, about that we're... we're the sub-series is, is, guess what now, we, we, is the fruit of the Spirit, right? Yeah. 
Love, joy, peace, and now we're on long suffering or pa- long suffering or patience. And guess what? We talk about the fruit of the spirit is what God desires for us. It, he, he, how He desires us to respond to Him, and how He desires us to respond to man, our fellow man. Amen. And guess what? When we mature, all of that stuff that God put in all those dreams, guess what? They come about because God said you can handle it. You can handle the wife. You can handle your business. You can handle the wealth that you want that God put in your life. God doesn't just want to give it to somebody unprepared because it'll destroy you. Because guess what? He wants you to raise your children up in, in the way. The Bible says raise up a child in the way that they should go in him. And when they get older, it would not depart what? What God said, not just the Guess what they used to have? And I'm a historian somewhat, but they used to have the thing. I call it a Jeffersonian Bible. And what Thomas Jefferson used to do is he used to take the scriptures that he liked and then he'd make his own Bible. So he'd ignore the stuff he didn't want to hear. <laughs> and so, yeah, you can see it's in the Smithsonian. They had it. They have a Bible where his Bible, where he taped uh, the scriptures and he made his own. <laughs> so so we read why he, why he wanted to read. <laughs> and some of us have a Jeffersonian Bible. The stuff we like. We're like, yes, amen. But the stuff we don't like in God, uh, patience, giving, walking in love, forgiveness. Guess what? We, 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 God didn't say that. Amen. And so what happens now is God says, I can't trust you with the whole thing because you're not going to teach other people what we call the full counsel of God. Amen. So we have to teach you holiness and giving, giving and love. Forgiveness and uh, 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 watch your playlist. We got to teach all because that's the whole count. That's all of who God is. The fruit of the spirit is the compilation of who God is, his personality. Amen. And so we're talking about patience, right? Why are we talking about patience? Because God is patient with you. <laughs> Amen. So God wants us to be patient. Amen. So go ahead. And guess what? This, ser- this is called this is the second part of that series, a patience part two. You know, and we're talking about today, we're talking about patience and God's timing. Last week, we were talking about patience with others. This one is called patience with God's timing. Patience with God's timing. Amen. And write it down if you can. If not, then play the video over again. Play the broadcast over again. Amen. Patience in God's timing. How many know that God has a time for you you to get blessed? God has a time for you to get a wife. God has a time for you to get a job. God has a time for you to get healed. He has a season for it. And guess what now? We're thinking that this is a magic book. And guess what? As soon as you pray it, it's supposed to just happen. And when it don't happen, it don't work. Don't you understand that when God does things in technology, we call it a back end. And back end technology is is what's done in the back, whether it's an operating system, whether it's anything, programs or whatever. That's the back end that you don't see. All you see is you go on Amazon and be able to click on this. But the back end, there's stuff back end means there's stuff working in the background that makes you be when you click on the order cart or whatever else like that, then your order comes in. When you're praying, God has what's called a back end. That means when you're praying, all of this other stuff got to happen first. So you got to wait for it because just because you don't see it, the Bible says we walk by what? Faith and not by sight. So God has timing. He got to get you ready for the blessing. God, I want a spouse. God, I want a business. God, I want to be healed. God, I want a Boaz. God, I want a root. God, I want to move into my house. God, I want some new shoes. God, I want a promotion in my job. And so what God does now is get you uh, 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 working on other places. He'll work on your character. And then God will test you. I want to be a millionaire. Okay, let's see if you can give with that. I'm going to give God to give you a little bit of an increase and see what you do with it. And he'll stand back and you and some of us were so immature, we'll think that that's the full blessing. God, I want two or three. I want a whole house full of kids. When I get married, I want eight kids. And he'll get you one child that's fussing and throwing baby shoes, all that other stuff, and see if you want to throw that child out the window. He say, you can't handle no, you can't handle two. You want, Lord, I want, oh, Lord, I, oh, man, I want five kids because I was an orphan. And I want all of these kids, right? I, I love John. I love you, too. Yeah, so we want it, and God get to laughing, like, okay, let's see how you handle Johnny when he throw that baby shoe off. Huh? 
French fry under the chair, the real brand new car, French fry under the seat. Oh, snot running down, you got to go wipe the snot. He on his new shoes, on his new shoe. He, 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 threw, he throwing up baby milk on the, you know, <laughs> you just change him. Right? Johnny having a good time, right? And so what happens is a lot of times, what's going on, brother? What God, we, we try to, God prepares us for stuff with adversity. So he, so, so guess what now? God says, they say, you want five kids? God wants you to get, you want to, you want to get married and have five kids? So guess what? God will use that one child that's just fussing and crying, won't go to sleep. And they, they're the bot, they're kicking the bottle, bottle off, kick the hat off, all the other stuff to stretch you so that you have patience for what five of them, right? So that first child, you'd be surprised, you know, that first one, I don't know why he won't go to sleep. Why? Because you said you wanted five. God preparing you for the patience of five, for five of them. Right, right. So that first one ain't going to go to sleep. You, you know, you, I, I had kids and one child, you know, you can put in the car and they go to sleep quick. You know, oh, I put Hannah in that car, boy. So it's oh, over. Oh, Charlie, no, nah, you can't bribe him off. You know, you stick a ball in Charlie, Mark. Charlie, I got a picture of him. Milk all down on my mama's lap. Milk all, he knocked out. Right. One of them do it with food. One of them do it with that. But guess what? You know, Lord, I want five. Lord, I love Johnny. I want five. I'm going to give him five kids. We're going to have. Oh, we're going to have a big house. Baby, we're going to get a big house. We're going to have all these kids. Right. right, right. And God like, OK, you want them? I'm, I, you know, uh, so I'm going to prepare you for it. I want five. Lord, I'm going to be a billionaire. The Lord told me I'm going to be a billionaire. I saw it in my dreams. And I, 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 yes, amen. So guess what he'll do? He'll give you a job. Guess what? Now, a good paying job. He'll say, now, honor me. Give. Amen. Well, when I become a millionaire, no, 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 because if you can't give at the level you are, that's <laughs> if God gave you two point five million dollars right now, the tithe is going to be two hundred fifty million. You're going to be like, oh, I can't give no. I ain't going to give nobody no two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, <laughs> I ain't no sucker. I'll give him that twenty five and high five him. Why? Because you didn't learn with that other stuff. God is not going to give you five kids and you don't have the patience with one. So little Johnny, every time, every time he put that shoe on, that little baby to kick that shoe off, you'd be mad. You know, <laughs> he's three years old. You got a brand new Porsche. All of a sudden now, you know, French fries under the seat. Oh, no. <laughs> you can't have no five. Right. So God will prep you for it. Look at your name and say, God is preparing me for my destiny. And that's OK. Right. And so guess what? God is not. And so as you grow up, God will promote you and give you more responsibility. Yeah. Women, you want a husband. But guess what? Now he's got to get you from female to woman. And it takes time to do that. He guys, you want to be a millionaire? He got to get you from stingy and cheap. Right. <laughs> to giving five dollars. Oh, oh, it's kill to giving one percent. To give, I had to talk to me because we love money. Money is God. Money is blood. So we're going to find a way not to give, right? We're going to do it. Women to do it easy. <laughs> huh? And so I got to get you where you're just like with women now, right? Uh, uh, and, and I told you before, there, and we're going, this is, this is about patience. And we're talking about God's timing. Amen. And, let, and, and the sub talk is let it play out. So while I'm talking, go ahead and go to the scripture, the book of Isaiah. Let it play out. Amen. God's timing. God is a God of faithfulness. God wants to know that you can. He wants to, to teach you that if you can handle it, he got to prepare you for that stuff. Sometimes these people on TV get on my nerves because they act like that. It's just you just you just persecute, persevere and fight hard and you're going to get it. Don't ever give up on your dream. And they get Academy Award. They say little stuff like that. But the problem, the thing that they don't tell you, they don't have it because it's temporary for them. But God don't God don't don't he don't. Yes, persistence is a part of it. But obedience is the number one reason why you don't get stuff. Hollywood's lie is if you just work hard, pursue, and just keep dreaming, that's some dizzy stuff. But God, ain't, God don't hand you stuff just because you're stubborn and determined to make your dream work. 
God has a bunch of principles. That he has principles. He has a way of doing things. And if you, I wanted you to live holy. I want you to keep it in your pants. I want you to give your 10%. I want you to praise me. I want you to be, I want you to be faith. I want you to go and get other people. I want you to go and not be ashamed of the gospel. Share the broadcast. Share so that other people can know you're a believer. And then he'll trust you on this level and see if you'll do it. He'll be like, Hollywood says you don't have to do the things of God, but you, if you just work hard at your craft, you'll eventually get there. But I'm here to tell you when you get there, there's a demon there waiting on you, especially if you're doing anything for God. If you're not prepared for it, it'll we had that, what's that basketball player that was in the club with a pistol? For the, I can just say the Grizz, I don't want to name his name, but guess what now? He had worked hard and all that stuff, but because he wasn't spiritually prepared for that devil that was there, guess what? It's about to be snatched away. You had another guy that is one of, I can't call his name, for the Warriors. He, he found out that he's working, his best friend would sleep with his wife and both his children ain't his. You got to understand that when you get there, and if you're not prepared for that thing and you married the wrong person because you didn't put God first, that stuff can be a, that can tough, can, wealth, wealth can be a mockery to you. Amen. Especially black men, the devil doesn't want you succeeding because he doesn't want a black family intact. He don't want you going around, well, you know what, I'm going to go put a ring on it. Where's her name? You know what, I'm going to show y'all how it's done. I had half brothers and half sisters. I'm not going to do that no more. Every last one, I'm going to have my last in here. I'm going to honor my wife, and guess what? She's going to be the envy of everybody. It ain't about no money or something like that. They should know because of the way she smiles. Hmm? They should know. They be wanting to. <laughs> I told my brother, I told, who should I marry? I said, you know, your, your wife should be so exquisite that a fight break out. <laughs> Oh, yeah, a fight. Oh, <laughs> fight done broke at a funeral, boy, huh? <laughs> Lucas standing up. I, I knew it was going to happen. Dun, dun, yeah, a fight break out. Come on, Drew, huh? Well, short dog got some game, too. Come on. Don't sleep on me. But guess what happened now? You know? Is it, guess what? When you put God first with patience, you got to let it play out. God's trying to see if you're going to do it his way. And when you make a mistake, are you going to repent? Or you're going, to, you're going to take the business part of God, but not the character part of God. I want my bank account filled, but I don't want my spirit filled. I don't want to be filled with the Holy Spirit and be talking in tongues, because guess what? The Holy Spirit is going to convict me of my lifestyle. He's going to convict me of my playlist. You know, He's going to convict me of the women I'm with. He's going to convict me of my sex life. He's going to convict me of how, what comes out of my mouth. He's going to convict me. He's going to convict me. Because guess what? Now, God wants his care. He wants to see himself. So that when you go before people, because guess what? Prosperity puts a light on you. Trust God's time. Look at your name and say, trust God's time. Isaiah chapter 40, 28 through 31. I want to get you, I want to encourage you today that if you're following Christ to keep doing, even if you don't see it working. Because guess what now? As we say in technology, there's a back end to it. We talked about it at Amazon. You can click on that order thing, but you just think it's just the front of, oh, I just had an order. So, but at the back end, you might have, an, you have an operating system, you have scripts, you have programs, you have APIs, you have um, other people, you have VPCs that go with it. You've got uh, 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 all kinds of whitelists that go with it. You've got firewall rules that have to go with it, bi-directional. Yeah. <laughs> Talking where you're at, Jabri. You know, and, and so you have all of these things that you have. You know, cab meetings, you know, for change requests, things like that that have to happen. You have environment you, where there's a uh, uh, test, UAT development, and then rolled over to production. We call it life cycle management. You have those things that happen, compliance that has to happen, patching to keep it compliant, to keep those things, those, those things, you know, uh, uh, working, right? You, you know, and so for technology, you have a database that handles the data that parses that out. You've got, you've got other, you've got alerts, you've got log, login features that have to happen for alerts and thresholds and things like that, right? And so guess what? That's the stuff that's in the background. 
Amen. So you're praying and God is working in your character. He's working on the wife. He's working on your destiny. He's working on how you handle pressure. He's working on all of these things. So when you get there, the devil can't take it. So that when you get an NBA contract, you're not in the club with a pistol and you don't even need it anymore. You don't need three, five, four, five women like you used. You don't even need it then because God will give you a quality woman that does all of that stuff and then keeps your reputation because she's lovely. She's graceful. So God is working that stuff out. Let's go ahead and go here. The Bible says this. And I want to encourage you today. This is the prophet Isaiah talking about God. He says, has I not heard? Has I not known? Has I not heard that the everlasting uh, God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, what thinks not? Neither is he weary. Look at the name and say, wait on God. There is no searching of his understanding. That means that when God is doing stuff, you're trying to figure it out and God and God's going to do it. But you're trying to figure out how he's going to do it. And so what? That, that's tearing you out. I don't give because I don't know how God's going to give it back. Right. I don't want to forgive because I don't want them doing it to me again. I want to let them know they can't do that to me. I ain't going to put up with it. So guess what? I'm not going to forgive because I don't know how God's going to make them act or not. I lost my job. I don't know when I'm going to get another. I'm scared. He gives power to the faint and to them who have no might. He increases it. And guess what? When you start to depend on your own strength, it'll wear you out. It's time. You know why you're tired? You know why you're frustrated? You know why you feel like you don't have no hope? Because you're relying on yourself. Look at your neighbor and say rest. rest. On the other side, one more time, say rest in God. God has timing. Could it be that you're not doing anything wrong? It's just not the right season for it. Could it be that your prayer is right, that your actions are right, that your heart is right, that guess what? God understands where you are at your level, but God is trying. I don't know if y'all know, y'all a bit young, but back in the day in our generation, mama, because money was a little tight, what she would do, she didn't just, she didn't buy you no shoes that fit, huh? She buy them a little bit bigger because she knows what you're going to grow in them. And she don't want to just be because you're growing like that. She don't want to just be every month. You, she get new shoes. So she can get you. So it'd be loose for a little while. Amen. And so what happens now is God is understanding now that he'll give you a big dream. And then now you got to grow into it. Look at your neighbor and say, keep moving. Even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. But what they that wait upon the Lord shall what renew their strength. You're going to have to wait for it. Why? God is stretching you. God, God can answer your prayer right now. He's got to stretch your character. He's got to stretch your prayer. Because don't you know when you get to a certain place, there's a devil after you. And you got to learn how to pray right now at the level you're at. So when you get there, you don't know, the stress and the pressure and the... the I, that young man did not know that the woman that he was with, I love you, I love you, John. You know, he wasn't ready. The one that had the two kids by somebody else. You don't understand what's, where, you, where you're trying to go. All you're seeing, Hollywood is showing you all the, everything is white. You got white pajamas on, white suit, white car, you know, you know, the pimp stuff, you know. <laughs> And everybody's slinging slow jams. Everybody is, is beautiful. Everybody got puffed up lips and butt stick out. That's all you know. All them women, huh? And because we looking at that, we want that. And we don't understand how the, the, the vulturous side of that stuff. Or those women who look like that, how, how hateful they are. Hey, they don't want you. They don't want your, they don't like your culture. They, they just use their looks as a key to get certain things. They can't wait to get rid of you and separate you from the money. And because now you're not developed, you can mess around and go there. And there's a bigger, de- and they, the devil is beautiful in that place. Some of the most beautiful people in the world are the most wicked. And you don't understand that where you are now, all you see is the commercial. And so God is trying to prepare you for a devil that you don't even see yet. 
God is trying to prepare you for Goliath. Why, Lord, am I with you anointed me to be king? Here, God anointed David to be king. Why, Lord, did you anoint me to be king? And I'm back here with these stinking sheep messing with this bear because God is trying to prepare you for the Goliath that you don't see. Look at your neighbor and say, it's not the bear that you see that's going to be your problem. It's the giant that you don't see. I want a Bentley. I want this. I want this. I want. And that stuff come with some stuff to you. And you have no idea. And you got a weak prayer life now. You don't understand the sheer demonic forces that are going to come against you when you get that stuff in. Wait on. Look at your neighbor and say, wait on God's timing. And guess what? Don't just wait. And when you when we're going to tell you how to wait, wait, don't just be being still. That means take the classes where you are now so that you can be good in the fifth grade. So you be ready for the sixth grade. David was ready for Goliath. I should have been I should have brought that story. David is was ready for the Goliath because he fought the bear and the lion when nobody was looking. Because what the devil wants more than anything else is to have a Christian who say they're a Christian and go to a level that you want to go to unprepared. Because he got something for you, doc. If you like women, he got one smarter than you and pretty. He got your type. You like them tall with legs, your hips or whatever y'all got now, huh? He like them like he, huh? You got your man, you, you want him with some curls in his head and biceps and all that other stuff. He got somebody for you, but he's slick. God know what to say, huh? Your account, your lawyer know what to say. That football player, Terrell Owens, worked, he did hard, he did hard work, only to find out his accountant had robbed him while he was playing football. Why? Because at that level, the devils, they're craftier. The Bible, your, your Apostle James said, let, let patience have his what perfect work. Look at your neighbor and say, let God finish you. Don't be in such a hurry to get to the promised land that you can't handle it because muscles ain't going to do it. Your intellect ain't going to do it. You got some people, the devil got schemes you ain't never heard of yet. And if you don't learn how to pray and hear the Holy Spirit and you have a, and be submitted to a pastor right now, that the devil's going to eat you. He's ready to eat you alive. Praying Hollywood prayers. Lord, grant me the serenity to do it. Now that I can't, the stuff I can't, all that, that stuff don't mean nothing. The devil come in with some stuff. If you don't know how to say in the name of Jesus, you don't know how to pray in tongues, you toast. So patience doesn't just mean waiting. It means submitting to the level you are and what God, the training that God gives you at that level, learn on that level. Master that level. Don't just sit there and wait and get old because you'll say stuck there. Patience in that means mastering the level that God's giving you. Amen. Hmm? They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. Guess what? They shall walk and not faint. When you are doing it God's way, God will give you the strength for the next level. But guess what? The strength for your next level, you're getting it at this level. You, God, oh, now where you are now, God's preparing you for the next level here. But what happens now, we want to skip and go all the way over here unprepared. Because of the commercial, because Hollywood has showed us a lie. The video showed us a lie. ESPN that lied to you. The y'all you see is a drag. Everybody got white on. Everybody got, you know, huh? Got a white woman. Got, you know, you got all that stuff going. <laughs> but they don't show you divorce court five years later because you done married the wrong girl. Because you didn't have no discernment because you think you can figure it out. You, you don't know it, man, please. I don't care how smart you are. You can't out hustle a hustler. I figured out all the angles. This is what's going to happen because this spreadsheet. No, you don't know. You can do data. I'm a data scientist. You can do all the data science you want to, all the statistics you want to. And you got some people out there that can out hustle you. It takes the Holy Spirit to say, no, that ain't the one. That ain't your friend. God doesn't. God doesn't just promote you. God has to raise you up. That's how he promotes you. He grows you. He develops you. So the scripture says, despise not the chastening of the Lord, 
For he chastens those he what loves. He doesn't want you to go to a place where you don't love him. He wants you to have a deep love for him first. He wants you to choose him first at the level where you're at. He wants you to put him first at the level you're at. If you can't put him first with your money and your time now, you're too busy for God now. Guess what? I'm in class. I'm, in, I'm about to graduate from UC Berkeley. And I'm in class doing my homework. But guess what? God has reminded me, make, make sure that stuff in you, make sure I'm person your heart. He's given me a beautiful wife who's beautiful inside and outside. And we, we hung out. We went for a five-hour road trip yesterday just to giggle and eat hot dogs. <laughs> Listen to some Canton Jones and some Joel Osteen. Just chilling, right? We are, we're talking about nothing. We're just going nowhere, riding. But guess what? I love her, but I can't let her be number one. I've got to make sure that God is first place. Can God trust you with what you want without losing you? Because sometimes people go to church when they have hard times, but then as soon as they get what they want, as soon as they get to Johnny, they shacking up with Johnny. They ain't got no time for us. They, they sleeping with Johnny. They sleeping late with Penelope. They at the beach with Penelope on Sunday. They ain't going to get, guess what? They going to buy her a diamond, but can't get, <laughs> huh? Hey, Amen. God wants to be able to trust you at that level where he doesn't lose you. And he doesn't want the devil to devour you. And so what we do is we're looking at the, the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes. We're looking at how people look, how they dress, how pretty their wife, how pretty their spouse are, how pretty the car is. Oh, and they're like, I want that, I want that, I want that, I want that. A lot of them had to sell their soul to get it. And the Bible says, what profit is a man to gain the whole world, but to come on, lose his soul? It ain't worth it. So not God, could God be making you wait so that you understand that in him you're complete already? So that when you get there, that stuff don't have you, it doesn't define you. You can give it away and, and take it or whatever else, but you still got it, huh? Now, the only thing you need is the Bible and the Word of God, and you're fulfilled. I, I thank God that God blessed me with my wife when I was losing everything. So that I know that she loves me no matter what. She loves me no matter if I lose a job. She God bless me with somebody that loves me if I'm on my last dime, if I make a mistake at work. I don't, I don't ever, huh? That ain't her main focus. That's why I know she loves me. God gave me somebody that loves me, and God made sure she came and everything was falling away. And that's what you want, fellas. That's what you want, women. That's what, when your body, when you gain weight after having these kids, when this happened, and guess what? They still love you. Amen. Let God do it. Let trust God's timing. Let it play out. So what does patience look like again? Patience looks like being consistent. When you don't see it, you're still coming to church. When you don't see it, you're still giving. When you, I, I, I guess what now? And guess what? When you're waiting, be developing things in the Spirit. I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit? I want to be filled with the same thing Pastor talking about. Let me get out there. Let me, guess what? While I'm, while I'm waiting on this, I'm going to get my armor. I'm going to get what I can get right now at this level. I'd be wearing my Bible out. I'd be speaking in tongues. If I don't, I'd be praying and believing God for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Because guess what now? Guess what? The most of the things that are going to last are the things available in the Spirit and in heaven. And you got that right now. And God wants to teach you to value the things of him over the other stuff. And then when he gets other stuff, man, I don't have a problem with him. That stuff come all the time. If I get called on, I turn, no, I'm not interested. I hang up, I, I should not, but I hang up on people that try to hand me my new, don't know. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm fine. Why? Because God blessed us to value the things of God first. My, my Bible is more important than the Jaguar outside. It's marked up, I hold it close to me. I wait for when I go when I wake up. What I do, baby? I go say I say good morning, baby. And I go roll up and go right to that prayer room. I get my decoration board out. I declare I got joy and love, right? Huh? And Tweety Bird, she'll come in there with me. She have a little blanket and lay down. She got a little rabbit now, that little bunny. 
and she'd sit there with her Bible and just lay down on that little couch and have a little blanket. Right? I know not about she marking up stuff now. She'll read some scriptures out of, out of, out of what I think you own Job or Psalms now. The end of Job. Amen? But we're showing God that we value him. Right? Over everything. And that's a man of character. A man of character is a person, Lord, this blessing don't have me. This, and guess what? The world is temporary. It's going to fade away anyway. It's going to fade away anyway. Amen? We're going to take, but this is going to fake. This stuff is temporary. The stuff that they're showing you on TV that you want, and the devil trying to get you starstruck with all you see is diamond. Like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Guess what, Solomon? Solomon, his salary was $300 million and probably $500 million a year in today's salary. And at the end of his life, he said, I chased all that stuff and it was vanity. 700 wives. Why? They, they ain't talking to count concubines, huh? Oh, Lord, I know you can't. <laughs> Black men, huh? Huh? Hey, he ain't got no energy. Look. That sounds like something, boy. You'd be in a wheel hospital. You know? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't want to be nasty, but they could take more than you can get in. You'll be in a freaking <laughs> hospital over here talking. Uh, yep, and I, huh? <laughs> On the IV and everything. You'd be laid up. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> one is, trust me, one's enough. Huh? One is enough. Y'all reading that book like, dang, nigga, why? You know, look, no. African American, why? <laughs> Dip. No, you ain't anointed for that. You'd be in the hospital. Huh? Losing your hair, all that kind of stuff. Because all that, there's 700, 700 mother in laws coming. All, all 1,400 shopping. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Why are you looking at her like that? No, I do look ugly in this dress. You said it. I ain't said nothing, right? <laughs> huh? Where you at? <laughs> huh? Who are your friend over? I don't like none of them. <laughs> I don't like the way she look at you. <laughs> you had 14, 700 of that boy, you, <laughs> you want to jump, you want to run. <laughs> huh? Amen. Let patience have a let's go to the takeaways here. But remember, let God develop it. But guess what? You got to keep God will. What God will do is walk ahead of you. And guess what? He'll he'll keep walking. And guess what? You, you can stop walking with God and God keep going to your destinies with him. He's not just going to drag you. He expects you to follow him to the wealthy place. And some of that means give that to so-and-so. Let's go serve over here at the Revival. I know you're tired, but let's go do it. He's asked me to do that many times. First lady be, be not feeling with, and we still go do the Revivals. And guess what? Stuff will open up the next week corporately. Amen. Look, look at your neighbor and say, I have decided to follow Jesus. It's a constant. You have to choose that every day. Amen. And as you choose it, God says, I can trust you with this right here. I can trust you with this. I can trust you. Okay. Well, you got saved today. Okay. Will you, will you, will you receive the Holy Spirit? That's another step. And he'll leave you where you are. And he'll, he'll bless you where you are at that little level, but you can't go to another level because God's not going to promote you. Mere, you know, the, the physical and the spirit are the same thing. God, he says, guess what? I pray above all else that you prosper even as your what soul prospers. Huh? God don't always want you to make you a millionaire here. He wants to have your spirit stronger too. He wants to make you a millionaire in the spirit. That means my prayer life is off the chain. Sometimes the brothers call me. I was like, man, you know, and I know they sound crazy, but it would be 9 o'clock. I'm at church. <laughs> I'm at prayer service. Investing in my spirit, investing, investing. When praise and worship go, I'm not just sitting there. I'm like, I'm, not, I'm, I'm bowing, I'm crying before the Lord. Guess what? I'm, I'm pulling from heaven. At the level where I'm at, I'm capitalizing at the level of it. Because guess what? There might be a time that that might not be available then. The Bible says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Where you are now, 
If you're single, if you don't have certain things, you got to you got to take advantage and say, okay, I got time. I can spend that with God. I can go and pray. I can go ask for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. I can be beginning to pray in tongues. I got to, I got time to burn. So let me go and pray. Let me get in the song. Let me build my spirit. Amen. Because I might not have that time later on. Amen. Take away one. And they, I know these are long, so either write them down or guess what? Go back, and I'm trying to show some grace here. Hey, go back and just, re, like I did, recycle the messages. Are you guys, you guys should be subscribed to the Promise and Ministry broadcast, right? Y'all should, on YouTube, you should be subscribed to Promise and Ministries Incorporated. And click on the subscribe. If you're not there, I give it. What we're doing is click on the subscribe button so you can get the messages. Amen? Amen. Guess what now? God's, God works in your life in what seasons? And guess what phases? Seasons and phases ain't the same thing because you can be in the same season and be staying there because you never graduated. You can still be at phase one. Your obedience at phase one initiates phase two. If you're willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land, the Bible says. Look at your neighbor and say graduate. graduate. You could be at the first grade. You don't get there just because you got old. You got some, <laughs> some old people now that's fools that's still in the first grade. Every time you tell them no, I can't believe he said that to me. I can't believe they said every time I'm the victim. And since I was a child, everybody's told me to be quiet. Well, maybe you need to listen. <laughs> right? You go in cycles. Why? Because God keeps telling you every time he gives you instruction, you, you, every time a woman hit, you look at, oh, I can't wait to hit, you know. Yeah, I can't. I'm working on my language, you know, and, and you know, and God still keep and you keep pat, failing the test. You keep failing the test. I told you about that dude that was broke. Kevin know him. He got 10 kids. I was mad as fire and all of them on assistance. And we I had lunch with him. And, 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 and guess what? Now he's trying to holler at the next one. I call the next victim. I was mad. I was just hot at him, man. I was like, man, he can't even get his teeth white. He's talking about, you know, I was mad, you know. I was like, dude. He said, I'm trying to, I was saying something about you. He said, I'm trying to talk to a two. I was like, what are you talking about? That ain't no two, huh? You got 10 kids, no wife, and the government taking care of them, and you trying to get 11. Same, so he in the same, guess what? He 50-something years old. He learned to live at that level now because he know he ain't going nowhere. God can't try. He's trapped. So you can have dreams in your life to where they ain't going nowhere because your character's not right. So guess what? Now phases, but God, you can be stuck in the phase because God can't get you out of, you the booty guy. You the one that, that women can't go to the water fountain because you the creepy guy. I don't know why. I just feel like he's looking at me. Yeah, in the corporate world, we got creepy guys out there. You the creepy guy, like, oh. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's funny. You got dudes that do, you know what I'm saying? He's a stalker. He's, I can't go to the water fountain, you know? You licking your lips? I'm like, dude, it's a stereotype. Sit, you know? Get your check and be quiet. And God said, I can't put this fool in management. <laughs> That's a walking sexual harassment case. Right? Seasons, phases. You look at your name and say, don't get, stuck. don't get stuck. Did you know, thank you, Holy Spirit, that the nation of Israel was supposed to have gone to the promised land. They got stuck in, they got stuck in the wilderness because they didn't, they didn't want to graduate. Their kids had to go in. Because God said ain't letting y'all go in like that, because they didn't learn. You think that because time has gone by, that's the same thing as a season. You can miss a season too. And God will have you straight right there at wintertime while everybody else is getting promoted. Everybody else is getting a husband. Everybody, because you don't want to submit to nobody. So, hey, yeah, I got to protect myself. I got to do all. You a masculine woman, you know, huh? And so God trying to give you a, a husband, but you don't want to be a wife. God trying to give you a, a wife, but you don't know how to handle bills. You not, you know, you, 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 you a good, you are an awesome boyfriend, but you're a terrible husband. What do you do with that? And what a, a boyfriend, somebody can take somebody on a date, do the sleep with a daughter, whatever, laugh at the jokes, and then go drop her behind off. 
You can shack up with her, but guess what now? A husband, you can't deal with the pressure of having to pay the light bill. I'll pay it again next month. Pay it again next month. I'm tired, you know. Go to, go to work every day. Take them to church every day. And if you're the, if you're the one to get tired after going to, sun, going to Sunday, going to church twice, and then you get exhausted, you're not a husband, you're a boyfriend. Because a husband demands consistency. And the son, a boyfriend, that's boring. I can't do this every day. I can't be with the same woman every day. I can't pray every night with my kids. Not for 10 years, 15 years, 20, 25, 30. I don't see myself doing that. I don't see myself coming to church every day. I can't see myself giving every time I get a paycheck. You're not a husband. Husbands are consistent. I ain't get, he can get his own sandwich. I, you know, my butt sticks out. I ain't got to do nothing. All I got to do, me and my mama going, we going to, you don't tell me what to do. I, you know, I got to look out for, no, no, you, you a girlfriend. You look cute. You, your lips shiny. You can do all that stuff. You wear all the time. You laugh at the jokes. You can go, you know how to dance. You can do all that stuff. When he go out with your pleasant company, but guess what now? You, it, 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 guess what? You're not a homemaker. You got a nice body, you pretty, you know what to say, you smell good, you know how to say, but you can't keep that act up. So you're a girlfriend, but not a wife. And you can miss your season while God's trying to make you a husband. You don't want to listen, so you can be like the children of Israel. Your destiny was to go to the promised land, but because but you, you didn't want to grow up, you got to leave your behind right there and let your kids go in. Be able to play with him if you want to. Phases encounters with God through people, situations. God works in your life in seasons, phases, and encounters with God or with him through what people, situations. I should have been tests, not just one, tests and triumphs. Like, look at your name and say life experiences. And if you don't learn from the life experience, you keep doing it, you're going he's going to keep testing you and you'll be stuck right there while everybody else is moving on. When God had me lose everything, uh, family and all this other stuff, on television, lying, doing all the other stuff. Guess what now? Why did I recover so fast? Because guess what? I learned the lessons. I ain't want to go through that again. Lord, I ain't going to do that again. Lord, I'm going to watch my mouth. Lord, uh-uh, no, 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 uh-uh. That fire burned. And I'm like, I don't want to go through that again. So guess what now? I don't want to repeat that stuff. I don't want to get comfortable in the wilderness. Lord, I pray for this ministry that the, that the people of this ministry don't want to be staying in the wilderness. And you got people that stuck in the projects right now, that be, not because God didn't give them opportunities, but because they're so stubborn and stiff-necked that when God tells them to repent and do other stuff, they'd rather stay in the projects and get an EBT card than to go and submit to what God say. They don't want nobody to tell them what to do. So their lifestyle is, is, is lowered so they can just live in rebellion. I'm going to sleep with who I want to sleep with. Yeah, you know, it's hot girl something. I'm a guy, I don't care if he a bun. He got a six pack. I don't care if he do. I don't care if he cuss me out. I don't care about that stuff. I'm going to sleep with who I want to. You don't tell me what to do. Then I'm going to come back to the church for a cash out. You know, because I slept with somebody that the preacher told you, leave him alone, leave him alone. I know he got a, a flat stomach. I know all this other stuff. I know he got that right there. But he, but he got a bunch of women out there. Now, everybody likes six foot something, flat stomach, that can smoke weed and do that. What they say about black people, 13% of men are sleeping with all the women. So they got a type. I heard a series that the men in prison have more kids than the other people do. You ever heard of that group? What? Color me bad. I want to sex you up. That's what they sing in everybody. Huh? <laughs> Galatians 6, 9. We're almost there. Huh? Let us not be weary in well doing. For due season you shall reap not. If you keep doing it. God, especially in men. God in men, he looking for consistency. Boring, glorious consistency. Pay the light bill again. Pay it again. Pay it repetition. And God is forming you through boring, corny repetition. Pick the light bill over the shoes. Huh? Don't get your teeth fixed. Get your child stuff first. 
That's a man. Don't ever look at where a man dressed and judge him. Sometimes he dressed that way so his kids can look good. And I clap for that. That's a man move. That's a man move. Huh? Sometimes he ain't got the Mercedes so his child can have. That's a man move. Huh? Jesus says when you give in quiet, God reward openly. When you be in man, when you're setting principles in quiet where everybody look at you and say, look, look at this right here. But God saying you sacrifice, God will reward you later on openly for it. Amen. The stuff I did as a father, they ain't get no credit for right now for it. But God reward me open for it. They lying right now. You get there and your kids cuss you out in perfect ears and straight teeth that you paid for. You know? Lying, talking about just lying, you know, huh? And so you don't get credit for none of that stuff while the world clapping for the person that messed, messed them up. And you sit there, you have to sit there like a man and just take it. And still pay the child support and still do this right here. And trust that God going to make it right. That's a man move. Hmm? God like it like that. God wants you to be misunderstood in public so he can reward you openly. Because when you do this, God is going to be in suddenly stuff. And suddenly start, they started handing me cash. And I was like, man, where did it? Well, I'll take it. Well, shoot, I'll put it over here on the stack. Amen. Take away two. Hmm? Understand that God will test you before promoting you. That little check you got ain't your money. It's a, it's a test. <laughs> you went and bought a car with it. God wanted you to tithe off of it. You went to the Bahamas <laughs> off your bonus check, and God is saying he wanted to see if you're going to come back. Because he had that little $4,000. God had $400,000, $4 million over here, but he wanted to test you over here with this little bit of chump change. You took it and got some gold fronts. <laughs> hmm? You got some Alizé. You, you, on, the, you on the riverboat. <laughs> huh? <laughs> you ain't got. We went to Michael. Michael Kors stock that went up with the with that income tax check. You in Magic City, <laughs> huh? Throwing cocoa butter some money. She <laughs> cocoa butter gonna get me, <laughs> huh? She gonna get. So we don't believe a cocoa butter gonna get saved. You you over there now? You you don't nobody see you 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 tashing stuff. You know you over there too. You know. <laughs> You 50 years old in Magic City, your back hurt, you still gonna try. So, you know, get your old behind. You know? I'll tell you, if you gotta dye your, if you gotta dye your dress, just let it go, player. <laughs> let it go. Huh? <laughs> you got nappy, nappy gray in there? No, nah, you 50, yeah, let it go. Come on. All right. Understand that God will teach you before. James chapter 1, verse 3 through 4 says this. Knowing this that what the trying of your faith works patience. What does that mean? What does that mean? God, some things that you pray for, God will pause it to see your attitude. And then he'll accelerate you. To see will you still praise me if you don't get what you prayed for. Is that because guess what now? If, if, if guess what? If you get mad when it don't happen and if you don't get what you want, that was your God anyway. But let what? Patience have a perfect work that you may be. Perfect, or we talked about last week, mature and entire wanting nothing. God wants when you get to a place of prosperity and where he wanted him, that God, God, before he gave me first lady, he wanted to make me a complete man and husband so that I could be a blessing to her. He made her a complete woman and wife, not perfect. By any, we are not, but guess what? We're complete in, in God's will and our intent towards each other and about a building a family. We submit one to another. I get her plate too. I love it. Yeah, you know, I before she goes, I go and anoint her. Even when she said I anoint her head and her feet, and she wake up with that stuff. I get, I'm the first one up to intercede for the family and praying the Holy Spirit and prophesy over the family. Hmm? I'm the breadwinner, not bread. You know, and she she takes care of the house. She takes care of me. She encourages and she she keeps the family together. She helps settle disputes, right? She goes for our health health and welfare. She seeks God on my behalf. She couldn't that Chuck. You know you shouldn't send that Chuck. You know, <laughs> don't be handing no cash out. Chuck, I don't know why you said that. You could have said it different. You know, you ain't from, you Dr. Lucas. You ain't, you don't be talking like in the street. Say it this way. Don't just say booty bounce. <laughs> don't say knock it, knock back out. Don't say that. Say fornication. You know, 
Don't say freak neat booty cutters. <laughs> you know? I'm working on it. She said, check, check, you classy now. You ain't country no more. <laughs> so she working on my language, you know. I've been hanging around these frat guys, these alphas, man. Been teaching me bad stuff. You know, they say, Kevin, they don't mess with the brand. But, you know, them, them frat guys, they had it to the windows of the wall. I did, he taught, Kevin taught me that song, you know. <laughs> oh, forgive me. <laughs> you know. See, see, them, them frat guys told you, hanging around them, you know. We went golfing last week. Kevin beat the daylight, the, the, the good nights out of me, man, you know. <laughs> take, away four, take away four. We're almost done. He is developing you and maturing you. This is the whole message. Despise not small, but God wants to do it to where, guess what? He wants to have a testimony out of your life. You know? I told you I was in the Army. I was looped in, but I, I brought 21 nurses to a party. I was, man, I got fat, but I was it back then. I had the gift of God. I went to Mardi Gras. I thought I, was, I, thought I had like a, a, a casino in my barracks room. I kid you not, I did. A casino. Hmm? Lord, you know. She knew I wasn't a saint back then, <laughs> you know? <laughs> huh? But guess what? When God Christ saved me, it was a testimony to his saving grace. He saved the worst one, the whole worst one, you know? He saved him. I look nothing like what I did before. I don't speak anything like that anymore. God wants to mature you so when he brings you before the world, like, man, my hero, Malcolm X, was just was a drug dealer. Right? I'm not, he's not, a, he wasn't a Christian, but I just, just as a man, the Re Reformation, right? And Lord, I'm not taking your glory away. Jesus is Lord. Don't get it twisted. You know, don't, ain't no other one. You know, he's the only one that can raise that. He's the only one that can heal bodies. He's the only one that can transform life. He, knowledge can't do it. Not, knowledge never say it anyway. Revelation does it. And revelation is knowledge plus God's power. It's God's, uh, it's God's signature. Knowledge didn't get me here. Revelation did. And God's open door. It was called anointing. Charisma. Not knowledge can't make my boss give me a raise. You can be the smartest one in the room, and then the people around you can be jealous and destroy your career. It takes the anointing to do it. The anointing gets with it. The power of God gets it. The, the unspoken does it. The spirit, when I pray and this stuff happened in California, uh, 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 I couldn't do uh, A religious practice can't do that. It takes the arm and the power of God. And guess, you know how you got it? Because guess what? You know how God blessed with prosperity? Because people everywhere around me prospers. Jobs show up. Curses get broken. That's the power of God. It doesn't come from religious practice or belief or information. I got three PhDs. I have things in the closet somewhere. I got robes <laughs> in the closet. You know? Kyle Brook at Harvard. I, got, we, I wear that Harvard so now that I didn't finish, but I still got stuff. Huh? I visited campus, what, two, three weeks ago in Cambridge. Yeah. That stuff means nothing without the power of God. You got people from Harvard or, uh, and, and that's under a bridge now sleeping. You got people in prison smarter than you ever thought. Information won't do it. You'll be, you, how I, you know how I know? A gorilla's stronger than you, but guess what? He's downtown in a cage right now. Some of the strongest men in the world are behind prison that could destroy you. Darn near dismember you with just ripping your big old arm, but their muscles couldn't do it. Amen? You ought to understand that who, to whom I speak has all power. To whom I speak has defeated the devil. To whom I speak is the only one who's ever risen from the dead. Allah couldn't do it. Muhammad never, Muhammad never rose from the dead. Muhammad never spoke to a demon and said, come out. Muhammad never uh, uh, um, brought water out of a rock. He never died for, for, for the, the sins of the world and then came back. The Bible says that he made an open shame out of the devil. Jesus looks and he's not bragging, but he talks to his apostles out there saying, man, we got power over demons. They've never heard of that before. No other religion does that. They can take a madman and speak to him and say, devil, come out. And they come out with their right mind. And they come, And Jesus says, man, don't even worry about it. He laughs at the, He says, I saw that joke. I saw the devil fall from heaven like lightning. 
That means that Mike, uh, Angel Mike, I call him Mike, Mike hit him so hard that he, and he hit, and it, his ascension, he hit him so hard that his fall was so hard, he just, he, 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 he flies down to heaven. Not out of his own power, but from the, from the, leer, from the sheer thrust of that blow. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. He is the only God to give himself as ransom. The king of glory humbles himself for his creation, man. He, he blows in his mouth. He calls it, scholars call it the ruach of God, the life of God, the essence of who he is. He creates everything else from a distance. He creates a verse. He says, let there be, let there be. But when he comes to man, he creates dirt, and then he comes down from his throne, and he looks at this man eye to eye and begins to... It's an intimate thing. And when man falls, he says, man, I could destroy him, but I love him. He's my friend. I don't want to send him to hell with that fallen angel, Lucifer, who I created and he rebelled from me. It talks about Ezekiel 14. I want to save him. And so he looks and he comes up with a plan. And the Bible says I had no one else to swear by, so I swore by myself. What does that mean? I took off this heavenly robe and I came down and I put myself in the womb of that woman and came. And so that because the Bible says for the wages of sin is death and no man was strong enough to pay for the charge of God. Who can stand before the elect of God? Who could do it? The Bible says who was worthy to open the seal and loose the book? And there was only one that was worthy. And so he comes down as Christ. Why? Because there was a Levitical sacrifice that had to happen. There was a sheep. The Bible calls him the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. He had to, there, had to, there had to be blood shed for the disrespect of, of God that happened with Adam and Eve. So God says, I will fix it from my own time. I will send myself. And the Bible says, prepare me a body. And so he comes and the, through the passage, he comes from eternity. And he passes from the door of eternity through the womb. The womb is a gate. It's a gate from the spirit realm to the physical realm. And he comes through this body and he grows up as a little boy only to be sacrificed. And while he's there, he heals the blind to show he's God. He heals the leper. No other person has ever done that. He raises a man, Lazarus, that was four days dead. Why? Because in the priestly, priestly thing, you know, the Sadducees believed that if you, were, that, that, that if you died, it, the spirit stayed in the body for three days, so God waited four days to show that he has power over death. No other God has that. He shows you he's the heavyweight champion of the world. Matter of fact, they put the Ark of the Covenant in another tent with other gods one time, and, and there were statues of God. And, and what happened is, uh, one night that they got one that statue God got, they woke up the next day and the statue God was laying over to the side on the floor, and they put and they they stood him back up, and the next day the, uh, his knees were broken to where he bowed before. Sorry for that rabbit trail. He is developing you. James chapter one. He already let take trace have a perfect work. But that's the difference. And you'll see, we'll see, we're going to believe God at these things that God's going to allow us to flow in miracle signs and wonders. God, somebody prophesied with me Friday, you know, yeah. creepy. If you have a miracle, he said, you're going to raise the dead, you know. Yeah. I ain't saying I'm all that, but it's the power of Christians have done that. Smith Wigglesworth raised 26 people from the dead. One guy, and I, leave, I promise I'll leave you this, one guy died and, and he owed a lot of money. <laughs> And his, his widower cried to Smith Wigglesworth and said, man, my, my husband died. She, he left me in debt. And Smith Wigglesworth was mad at the guy that died. He went and picked up his coat and said, get up, your bum. <laughs> he said, get your behind. You done left your wife over here. And he threw him against the wall. And then he, did, he threw him against the wall a couple of times and he came back to life. He said, now go back to work. You ain't sneaking out of here <laughs> and leave your wife like this where you go rest. No. You have the power to do that. You have the authority. The Bible says that we shall touch the sick and the sick shall recover. And that separates us from a religion. Because with God, I talked to a hero Israelite the other day and she was broken. I was like, that can't be God. Why? Because God has the power to deliver. He ain't just a religion. He's not just knowledge. With God comes power and authority. You don't understand who you're talking to. 
God has power in it. It ain't just a practice where there's nothing happening. God, God, when you worship God, God said, now move out the way and let me show myself strong. Get out of the way. You know? <laughs> God wants to do something in your life you can't do. Other religions have to defend God. God, Christian, you ain't got to defend God. God said, get out of the way and let me show, let me show the power in your life. Let the house, let the arm grow back. Let the doctor report say this and this and then stand, keep it. And all you got to do is point to me. That's all you got to do. That's right. Amen. That's how the real God stands up is what you've never seen before. His power. What we call dunamis. Action. Enough talking, make the arm grow back. Enough talking, heal her. Enough talking, get me a job. The anointing of God gets results. It's able to dry up a drug addict. It's able to dry up a person. Yeah, religious pra- information. Let me tell you, just, just, just three step. No, you ain't got to do all that. Move out the way in the name of Jesus. Dry up. It's time now to keep stop comp- competing against beliefs and theologies and all the other stuff. I ain't got to do all that. You pray and then I'll pray. Hmm? That's it. Take away, take away five. During your slow, dry seasons, that means when you when you praying and it ain't working and you frustrated and I ain't gonna get no more because I ain't get it ain't you know huh? No, become proficient in seeking the face of God. When your waiting period, become proficient in seeking the face of God uh, 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 through prayer, fasting, giving, church. I'm about done. I'm about done, Andre. Just the last one, attendance and reading the word of God. My bad. This is it. Can you come back before the infant, before the art, before the, uh, uh, okay, here, go ahead. Okay. I'm about to, is it, uh, seek through prayer, fasting, giving, and church, and giving, and giving, and giving, and, giving, and giving, and church attendance, and reading the word of God. Amen. Be consistent in that. <clears throat> What's happening, what you know, you know what happens? Is that people wait and don't do any of that till they see results. And all of a sudden they're going, well, oh man, you got a jet? Oh, well, I'm going to show them Man, dude, you've been in class for how long? You've been level up for all this time now. And all of a sudden when people get certificate, then all of a sudden you're going to go back and read the video. No, you should have been in class doing the projects. The HTML, you should have known about the firewall. You skipped all of that, and then guess what? Guess what we do? And, 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 and I ain't gonna tell you who said it because I know sisters y'all don't like it. But he said this about y'all. Sometimes we like to we like to stand the finish line and pick the winners. We don't just ladies, but we do it too in Christ. We ain't gonna do nothing. I ain't gonna pray. I ain't gonna ask for the Holy Spirit. The pastor saying all this other stuff. Then all of a sudden now, when pastor blowing up, everybody's blowing up. Then hey, can I get some advice about this? Then you were in class. I don't want to pray. I, until you see say, until you see something, and guess what? You're going to be just like the people. Noah, Noah was crazy until it started raining. Right. That's right. Then all of a sudden, you bloop, 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 you're trying to get on. Now the door closed now, Doc. That's right. That's it. Huh? Yeah. Huh? You floating looking stupid. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. I don't care. I got time. You know, what time the club? You know, hey, look, I got to go. You know, hey, cocoa butter come on it, you know. Hmm? Get, get my ones, you know. Amen. Matthew, and we're almost done here. Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 20 through 30, 37 and 38 says, Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul. This is the first commandment. God wants you at the level you are now, practice seeking him where you are now. Practice loving him with your whole heart right now. Practice serving, practice sharing. Guess what? I, I love God. If you love him, share, share this broadcast on your Facebook page so everybody know you. It's, it's saved, so it mess up your little booty grind, your fornication or whatever you call it, you know. So it mess your reputation up, amen, huh? You're proud to be black, but you got to be proud to be saved first, right? Share it. I dare you to share the broadcast, amen. Let's go ahead and pray. If you don't know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, guess what now? This is the one thing you don't wait on. Don't wait, because guess what? People don't preach about this anymore, but Jesus is coming. I don't know when he's coming, but he's coming. The Bible says he's coming like a thief in the night. That means he's going to catch you <laughs> off guard. Yes, he is. Hmm? 
Don't let him catch you over there dancing with cocoa butter, you know? <laughs> dancing like you got dice in your hand, you know? <laughs> Don't do all that, you know? <laughs> Don't let him catch you at Freak Neat. They didn't cancel that. They, they got any more, no. Come on, the frat guy know. Did they got Freak Neat? Don't even look. Yeah, I guess not. He don't know. Them frat guys know. You know? Well, especially from HBCUs. They know all of that stuff. Yeah, but guess what? Don't let him, guess what? Don't let him catch you like that. This is the time and the hour for you. The Bible says when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away child. Look at your neighbor saying, grow up. Grow up. Right? It's time to build your family. It's time to be faithful to one wife. It's so that people look at you with admiration, not that you cool. They when they look at and I looked at, you know, Dr. King and Malcolm X, I don't look at them like they're cool. I'm like, I, I, I admire them. I admire, I want to be like that. I want to roll like that. I want to have the respect. I want when people speak to me, there's weight to it. Because there's a lifestyle, there's a back-end application that supports my front-end. And sometimes, look, we do, cast. we got the front-end looking good. That URL look good, but the back-end is, is nasty. It's open source. <laughs> Ain't no license to it. You know what I'm saying? Huh? It's bugs everywhere. Right? Hmm? You want your back-end. People will respect that. That is a well-written application. So when your front-end show, every time they click, it's like, man, this stuff, content is made. But have you seen the, the, the script? You've seen the program that's running? It's so efficient. It's, it's, it's compliant. It's, got, it's updated. You know? Right. The Bible, Jesus says, let your light so shine that people may see, see your life and then glorify God in heaven. See how you treat your wife. There's a dignity in having a standard. There's a dignity in having standards. It's to the right woman, it's attract. Like, dang, this guy, he don't just dress like something's beneath him. Look, you saw that one that walked by, he ain't even look. He, he focused. He stop. Hello, how you doing there? So and so, so and so. Who is that? Huh? The wrong woman is that, but you, you want to attract the right wife? Have some standards. Like, man, who, would that, who is that? Man, if I get with him, he's going to respect me and my, I got instant credibility. Huh? Amen. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I come to you as a sinner. Forgive me for my sins. I confess that Jesus is Lord. And I believe that God raised him from the dead. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and make me a new person. And I will serve you all the days of my life. And fill me with the Holy Spirit so that I may live this life that you've ordained me to live. In Jesus' name, amen. Look, if you prayed that prayer, guess what? God is beginning to work on your back end. What, you know what that means? What it means when you prayed that prayer, you instantly, the Holy Spirit came inside of you then. You were, you were baptized in the Holy Spirit the second you said it. The Bible says, He who is in Christ is a new creature. Old things have passed away, because all things become new. Now, being filled with the Holy Spirit is a different event. That means what? Being filled with the things of the Spirit of God. And that's a process. But when you get it, like I said before, there's something different about you. There's a, there's a, you know, you want to go from Harvey to Obama, you know, and both of them are smooth. But then Obama was like, oh man, God, you know, I don't know what it is. He can have genes on, but there's something different, you know, Harvey, you know, or, or where you are to graduate to Harvey and Obama, same level, right? To where you're like, oh my God, look, there's a difference, right? You don't have to have a bunch of money, but the way you, he don't laugh at the same jokes. He doesn't go to that same place. What's happening? The way he treats people, the way he prays over his food now. And guess what? You don't want, even men who are single, you don't want a bunch of women looking at you. You want the right one seeing it. You want to drive away the booties, the other ladies, right? <laughs> and you want the... You want the right one that's going to bring dignity to your men. You have a brand. You have a brand. And you want when somebody sees your wife or 
she don't have to have a, a, all that stuff. She has a dignity to her that other ones don't have. And, and you ain't got to scare her. You ain't got to threaten her. That's who she is. That's who she was before she met your crazy behind. That's who she always was. That's why it took you so long to talk to her. Why? Because she got standards. Hmm? Marvin Gaye called her a sanctified lady. Come on. <laughs> Amen. That's what you want so that your kids can see, I'm proud, that's my mother. And you say, that I'm proud, that's my wife. I'm, the Bible calls her a Proverbs 31 woman, right? That's what you want, men, but you got to be a man. You got to be a man of God, right? And guess what? Money can't buy them. She's not looking at the white car. She ain't looking at your suit. She ain't looking at your style. She's looking at your character. Amen. As Christians, we, there's certain things, and we got to let God, there's certain things that should be beneath us. And when you see that man, I'm telling you right there, David, because you, what? You, <laughs> huh? God will bring the right one. And she going to be like, oh, yeah. I can rest with this one. I can have children with him. I can start a family with him. And guess what? And he's not going to embarrass me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the mess. We thank you for patience, Lord, with you, Lord God. And as we wait on you, Lord God, we're going to seek your face. We're going to learn the lessons, Lord, so that we're not stuck in the wilderness like the children of Israel, Lord God. Father, we ask you for strength, Lord, where we have been discouraged, Lord God. Father God, give us the Holy Spirit to strengthen. The Holy Spirit, I ask you to strengthen us, Lord. For the new Christians, Holy Spirit, you live inside of them. Give them strength. Give them encouragement today, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, look, this is your pastor, Dr. Charles C. Lucas.